Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll be upgrading the optical drive in an early 2009 20-inch iMac. We've already gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the iMac, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to remove the memory access door using your Phillips screwdriver. Next, attach the two suction cups to the top corners of the glass panel. Then, gently pull back on the panel to detach it from the magnets that hold it in place. You can now remove the glass completely and set it aside. Lay the iMac back on the table. To remove the front bezel, we'll first need to remove these 12 Torx T8 screws. Start with these four along the bottom edge of the screen. These are longer than the remaining eight screws. Next, remove the eight screws around the outer edge of the screen. Lift the bezel up from the top edge so you can pull it down and off the bottom edge, but don't move it too far as it's attached by the microphone cable. Once you've removed the bezel from the iMac, you can disconnect the microphone cable by simply unplugging the connectors. Then, set the bezel aside. Next, we need to remove the LCD itself. We'll start by detaching the display temperature sensor cable on the left. Pull the cable out of its channel along the fan, then simply unplug it from its socket. Then, we can detach the LVDS cable on the right. To do this, first remove the two Torx T6 screws on either side of the connector. Then, use the black tab to lift it straight up and out. We can now remove the eight Torx T8 screws holding the LCD in place. Once the screws have been removed, you can gently lift up the bottom edge of the display to reveal the first pair of inverter board connectors which you can disconnect by simply pushing down on the locking tab and pulling the connectors apart. Then, lift the display further so you can do the same with the second pair near the top right corner. You can now lift the display off and set it aside. The optical drive is located in the middle right of the iMac. The first thing we need to do is peel back the EMI mesh tape from the drive. Next, remove these two Torx T10 screws. Lift the drive out of the bay and disconnect the SATA cable in the lower left. It may take a little wiggling to get it free. Next, flip the drive over. Remove the foam pad covering the temperature sensor, then gently pry the sensor clip free as well. Let the sensor itself remain in the iMac. Finally, remove the anti-static pad from the bottom of the drive and we can remove the drive from the carrier. First, remove these two Torx T10 screws. Then these two. Turn your optical drive around and disengage these two hooks using a nylon tool or one of your screwdrivers. Once disengaged, the drive should come free of the carrier and you can set it aside.
If your new optical drive came with a front bezel installed like this one did, you'll need to remove it before installing it in your Mac. First, use a screwdriver or nylon tool to disengage these two clips on the bottom. Then, flip the drive over and do the same on the top of the drive. There is one last clip to disengage here on the side, but often loosening the previous clips will also allow this one to come free of its own accord. Once all the clips are free, you can remove the bezel from the front of the drive. The optical drive carrier has two small pins that need to be removed in order to fit a non-Apple drive. All you need to do is carefully remove them with a sharp utility knife. Once these pins have been removed, you'll be able to install any compatible drive in this carrier. Slide the drive into the carrier, making sure that these two pins latch in these two notches while these three tabs sit on top. You can now replace these two Torx T10 screws. And these two. Place the anti-static pad and the temperature sensor bracket in the same places they were on the original drive there should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. Insert the temperature sensor into its bracket on the drive, then cover it with the foam pad. Then, flip the drive over and attach the SATA cable. You can now set the drive and carrier into the bay, making sure no cables are trapped underneath so that it lays flat. Then, replace the two Torx T10 screws that hold the bay in place. Finally, re-adhere the EMI mesh tape to the drive. We are now ready to close up the iMac. Set the LCD into place starting at the top edge. Reconnect the two inverter cables near the top by sliding their connectors together. Then, do the same for the pair further down. Lay the display all the way down until it sits flat. If it doesn't, you may need to adjust the position of one or more of the inverter cables so that they sit out of the way. Reattach the display sensor cable by lining up the connectors and sliding them together. Then, run the cable itself along the channel by the fan. Next, slide the LVDS cable back into its socket and secure it with the two Torx T6 screws. Finally, replace the eight Torx T8 screws that hold the LCD in place. We can now reattach the front bezel. First, reconnect the microphone cable at the top of the bezel with the connector near the EyeSight camera. Set the bezel back into position, starting at the bottom of the iMac so that it hooks into place, then slowly lowering it so that it lays flat while making sure the microphone cable lays in its channel. You can now replace the 12 Torx T8 screws that hold the bezel in place. Start with the four longest along the bottom edge of the display. Then, replace the eight shorter screws along the outer edges.
You can now set the iMac upright and replace the memory access door. Set the glass panel along the edge of the iMac and use a microfiber cloth to make sure there's no dust or debris on the LCD or back side of the glass. Then, making sure the bottom pin is positioned over its alignment hole, you can lean the front glass back into place. The other pin should align automatically, though you may want to squeeze along the edges to make sure the glass is flush. Finally, remove the suction cups and use your microfiber cloth to clean off any marks. You may now plug your iMac back in, hook it up, and turn it on.